Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Band Management. In this episode, we are going to start working on the account system. Uh, moderators and administrators will be allowed to have accounts. They will sign in with a password, and then they can do various uh, tasks like uh, adding, removing, and editing bands that we won't allow normal users to do. We're just going to do the back-end part of it right now. We're not going to worry about the uh, views, um, how we're going to implement it into um, the website. Uh, we'll do that in future video. Alright, so uh, we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to have functions for logging in and logging out. And the login function will take the username and password and it'll see if it matches in the database. Um, Logout will just destroy all the information because we are going to save some information to these sessions. So first of all, let's go ahead and... Uh, First of all, let's go uh, to our server, and we need to create the table. So let's look at our current tables. We have the bands table. We need to have a table for um, login. So we'll go ahead and say create table users, and um, let's see, it'll have id int. Um, primary key auto increment not null all that stuff that's just like the ID of the user so each user can have their own ID um, then we also need username which we will say is a varchar 16 so the maximum length of the username can be 16 characters and the password which is going to be uh, a varchar but uh, it's going to be encrypted, of course, so let me just quickly see how long the encryption string is going to be. Alright, so the answer to that question is 64. That's how long the encrypted password will be. And we do that. Let's just quickly describe users for a second. And we have our ID, username, and password. So the table is now set up. We can go back over here and take a look. We'll have our function login and we'll take our username and our password. First thing we want to do is we want to encrypt the password. So we're going to encrypt it using SHA256 and we're going to be of course the password. So uh, we want to encrypt it and we're going to use one-way encryption because what we're going to do is when we register the user we're going to take whatever password they choose and encrypt it and then put it in and we don't need to know what the password is because if we encrypt whatever they type in we can just see if they're the same because if I encrypt the word password it's going to be the same exact result both times so uh, that is just fine so we first want to get the encrypted version so that we can compare it with what is in the database so now we're going to say um, return. This is going to be similar to um, like, uh, okay. So we're just going to say get MySQL. So then we're going to query saying uh, select count star from uh, bands where, uh, sorry, from users, where username is equal to username in quotes and password is equal to password in quotes. So we're querying, excuse me, so we're querying, uh, so we're getting basically the count, the number of rows that we have for users where the username is the given username and the password is the encrypted password. And what this will do is we can say if there's a row return, then 
they have registered under that username and password. If nothing shows up, then it doesn't work, and that's a really easy way to see if it works. So we can say uh, numrows is greater than zero. So this login function will return true if there is a username and password, false if there is not. Let's go ahead and write a function register, which will take the username and the password. Uh, we, of course, first want to hash the password. Uh, that's important. And then we're not going to return anything from this. What we're going to query insert into users uh, the fields username and password values um, username in quotes and the encrypted password also in quotes so it will insert the username and password that we have into users so that is our login and register and uh, those are the two login and register functions that we need. Uh, we can also write uh, some pages. Uh, these are not going to have any uh, visible you know, data on them. Like You're not going to go to the page, but it's going to be a PHP script that will do something for us. So we're first going to do uh, require api.php. Uh, and then we're going to, or sorry, it's api slash api.php. And then we're going to say uh, if login username password, or sorry, it's, we're going to probably, yeah, we'll have them as post arguments and password, that should say username. So if the login function works, if they did successfully log in, uh, we also need to do session start. So we need to start the session because we're going to be using it. We're going to say um, the session username is equal to whatever the post username is because we know that it worked. So that's how we can tell if they're logged in. We can say, is their session username set? If it didn't work, um, I guess you really don't need to do anything because you just want to check to see if the session username is set and if it is then you know that they're logged in. Um, as far as a header we'll just do uh, location index.php and then uh, really easy is the log out which doesn't even <clears throat> need an if statement. All we need to do is say uh, session destroy. So when we log out, it will destroy the session. It'll get rid of that name so that they're no longer logged in and will redirect. Finally, we also need a uh, register. And register does not either need an if statement uh, because it's just going to be registering. So it's going to say register using username and password. Now the reason why we have these pages is because we can write some forms when we have like a login and register form which we may or may not do. Uh, you can have the form submit to this register.php file and then it'll just take the username and password and do the registration. So we may not end up using these but it is useful to have. So that's all for this video. We added uh, login and registering the functions that communicate with the database and then we added a couple of files that we will use like uh, login will definitely use, logout will definitely use, register I'm not sure how we're gonna handle registering yet so we'll see. Uh, so as always subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, if you like this video click the like button and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.